The city may seem very far removed from topsoil, but it isn't really. When we're in a big American city, we're very likely to forget that the roots of a city, like the roots of a tree, spread way out. The roots of both are in the soil. Without their roots, both would die. Of course, it's easy to understand why people forget that. They see so many buildings and so little soil. when they go to the markets to buy the fruits and vegetables and meat and milk that keep them alive, they're apt to forget that all of it comes from the soil. They take for granted so many everyday things they really could not do without. Most of us know a lot about cities. Surely it's just as worthwhile to know something about the soil. The soil that keeps our cities alive by keeping our people alive. soil is all about us, the greatest of America's riches, whether it's on a huge flat farm on our western plains or on a little farm tucked away in a quiet valley among our eastern hills. If you look closely at the soil as a plow cuts a slice through it, you may be surprised. Like a layer cake, the soil is in layers too. On top is the icing, a soft spongy layer called topsoil that grows most of our food. Just under the topsoil is a somewhat hard and sticky layer called subsoil. It feels a little like modeling clay. Then there's the bottom layer, rocky or solid rock, too hard for farmers' tools or for plants to grow in. It goes right down to the center of the earth. Now suppose we let the rock take care of itself and tell you more about the very thin outside skin over the earth we must take care of, the precious topsoil. For after all, it's the topsoil that feeds and clothes us. Plants grow better in topsoil. To show this, we first put soft, spongy topsoil in one box, and in another box we put harder, stickier subsoil. Then we soak beans in water until they're all ready to grow. Then we plant one bean carefully in the topsoil, and we plant another one of the beans just as carefully in the subsoil. Of course, we water both the beans. Now watch them grow as we speed up the pictures. See how the topsoil bean is able to push its roots farther and faster. And the topsoil bean can push up faster too. In only 10 days, the plant in the soft topsoil has a head start. Up to here, the food for both plants came from the beans. From here on, food in the soil coming through the roots made the plants grow. 
Because topsoil roots can spread so easily, they do a better job of feeding the plant the richer plant food in topsoil. Yes, the best crops come from our soft, rich topsoil. When the earth was very young, there were only rocks and water. No people, no living thing, just rock, water, great rolling sandy deserts and high mountains for millions of years. Snow covered the earth through long, cold, cloudy winters. And through the long years, the snow would melt in the warmer weather and the snow water would seep into the rocks. Then it would get cold and snow some more. The snow water freezing and melting in the cracks over and over made the cracks larger each time. As the rocks cracked more and more, bits of the rocks began to crumble off. And so, soil began to form. A crude sort of soil, to be sure, something like subsoil. But our first plants could grow in it. Life had come to the earth from the soil. Many more million years passed and there were small animals like this little lizard called a skink. As they died, their bodies along with the leaves and stalks of the early plants became a part of the soil and made it softer and richer. But it took ages of bigger and bigger plants and animals growing and dying and falling on the soil to build up our soft, rich topsoil. When we can get close enough by looking through a microscope, we can see the minerals and chemicals and bacteria that live in the topsoil. And the tiny creatures which keep only the topsoil alive, for they don't like the subsoil underneath. There are other living things in the topsoil too, ants and other insects. And earthworms, keeping the topsoil loose and open to the rain. All of them, as well as larger animals, like this muskrat, help make our topsoil richer and better, even by dying and becoming part of it. You can see that we must take good care of our topsoil, for it takes such good care of us. It takes care of us by turning the chemicals and minerals of the soil into the starches of the waving golden wheat, which gives us our daily bread and our biscuits and pancakes, and oh boy, our waffles, and into the fibers of cotton we make into clothes, and the vitamins for health, and the meat and leather, and all the things we must have every day of our lives. Now we're not taking good care of our precious topsoil when we plow steep land, or when we plow up and down hills, or burn off what's left of plants we've used instead of letting it decay back into the soil. Such things weaken our topsoil, and from poor, weak topsoil, we get poor crops like this. Just one hard rain on soil we haven't treated right, and topsoil nature has spent millions of years making is washed down the rushing rivers and off to the sea. By not taking good things from the soil, and by adding good things to the soil, we can take care of it, build it up. The name for the way of farming that's good for the soil is conservation farming. It's the best way to get the best crops and the most food for city people as well as farmers, all from the layer of topsoil powdered so thinly over the face of our earth. 